Hey everyone, yes I do mean you, it's me, Silver Daddy. Are you ready for another exciting adventure, aka trip or trippin' with me? We're about to discover and share some amazing life stories. If I take a few sudden tangent turns along the way, don't worry, because I'll find our way back. Come on, climb aboard, and buckle up, because we are ready to start another great episode of Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Trippin' with Silver Daddy. And I am in Palm County, which is the county just north to where I live. And I'm up on Route 441, and I'm just gonna stop places and check things out. Like where I'm at right now, I'm at the Lakahatchee Refuge. And this is what they consider the very northern part of the Everglades. And it's actually the last main remains of the Everglades. So behind me in this area is the refuge and the refuge is 1,400 and let's try that again. The refuge is 145,188 acres and it contains many things. You know all the stuff that we have in South Florida. Bobcats, mountain lion or the panther it has alligators naturally that's what everyone thinks of florida but this is kind of a very special area if you look out in the distance come look come look see out in the distance there those are cypress swamps the cypress swamps is the trees that grew in the swamp area before it went into the pine forest closer to the coastal many years ago. We're not talking recent because it's all been developed. And this back here is actually, I don't know if you can see it if you're watching me on YouTube. See that? That's actually swamp. That is the swamp and it's the last remains of the swamp in the northern part of the Everglades that's on what we would say the east side of the dike. Now, for those who are watching me, see this long looking like road here? This is actually the dike that was built. And this dike goes, I believe it's like 24, 25 miles. And it was built to contain that. And that's the Florida Everglades, which is nothing but actually water underneath all that. And that's why you don't see trees out in that area. That's all sawgrass. We've talked about sawgrass before. They call it sawgrass for a good reason. Because out on the top edges of it, and it has little teeth like a saw. You try walking through that, it's gonna cut you. Not only is it gonna cut you, it's gonna make you bleed. And when you bleed in the Everglades, guess what that draws? Sharks, no, I'm kidding, alligators. So it is a great place for fishing. As you can see, they're fishing right here. Come on, follow me camera. People do a lot of fishing. There's a lot of bass, what we up north call crappie, bluegill sunfish, gars, all that's out there. A lot of it's edible. So a lot of people actually come here and do fishing because they catch it and they can actually eat it. Now, what's interesting about this area is in 2016, the Florida government actually gave notice to the U.S. wildlife because the U.S. wildlife 
runs the Lockahatchee Refuge. And the, and the Florida State in 2016 gave notice to the national government that they were going to cancel their lease on this property and take it back because they are actually claiming that it's the national government that is causing part of the problem with all the invasive species. When we're talking about the problem with the invasive species, we're talking about the amount of phosphate that's in the water. So the amount of phosphate that gets into the Everglades and over into the um, refuge is way higher than what it's supposed to be. And this phosphate causes some problems because there are certain things that like phosphate. That's not really part of the Everglades. And one of them is cattails because cattails is actually used to suck out the phosphate. You find cattails in polluted water. So when you start getting cattails in the Everglades, it tells you the water is actually polluted. So there's a lot of things about the Everglades and the ecosystem that's really fascinating. And a lot of people just don't understand it. And I'm sorry if you're getting the wind and my voice is sounding all windy because I forgot my air sock to put on my camera. But as you can see, more and more people are boating and going out fishing. Hey everyone, we're gonna have a great show. There's a lot of things out in this area I want to do. There's a farm down the road sustainable farm you can pick your own strawberries i'm going to go there and then i also drove by a national cemetery we're going to see that talk about that and i'm actually going to go to the visitor center of the refuge we're going to do that as soon as we come back from break hey everyone do me a favor watch our sponsor and i'll be right back this is tripping with silver daddy be right back. Hey everyone, welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. I'm in Lakahatchee Refuge up in Palm County. And this is like the northern part of the Everglades. I'm hoping you're watching this on YouTube so you can see the video. See all that stuff down there? That's water. And that little green stuff, we call it duckweed up north. It grows, creates a lot of oxygen. And certain animals actually eat it. So this is actually a part of the Everglades National Park. And there's a lot of interesting things here besides the alligators. So we're gonna do a virtual airboat tour. We're gonna try it. We'll see how long, cause I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it. But here, when well, there's someone shooting something. There's a lot of fish and amphibians in the area. So I'm not gonna name all the fish, cause I don't know them. But there's a mosquito fish. I need that one at home. But there's also a lot of plants and there's even I see flowers that are blooming here. So this is like one of the few places that you can actually go out into the Everglades. Most of the Everglades is nothing but sawgrass. Here it's very shallow and you have these cypress trees growing. That's these big pine looking trees. Cypress, and they all have a bunch of that Spanish moss stuff growing on them. But this is a really cool area. And it's really beautiful here. A lot of cool things to do. 
Another place I just found driving. I didn't know this place existed. Driving, saw a sign. Looked like a national park sign because it was brown. Pulled in, yep, it's part of the national park system. Because it's part of the Everglades. But it's quiet and peaceful. Except for that gun firing. So I'm out on 441 area. There's a lot of things you can do out here. So I strongly recommend that you come out to this area. Come in the morning before it gets too hot. I'm starting to sweat. It's getting hot. And you never, I'll never see alligators here. I hardly ever see alligators. So I think we should go on that airboat tour. What do you think? Or at least try it. See if it actually works. So we're going to do that. And then after that, we're going to take a little break. See where I end up. Hey, everyone. I really hope you can see this on YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel, Trippin' with Silver Daddy. So you can just see how beautiful this place is. Even though it's all swamp. As you can see the water down there. Be cool if there was an alligator jump out of that water. Scare the crap out of me. That's what it would do. Okay. We're going to jump on the airboat. It's a virtual tour. But don't tell anyone. We'll act like it's real. Let's get on. Hey everyone. Welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. I'm at... Lakachi Refuge, and I'm in the visitor center, and they have a virtual airboat ride. And the thing vibrates like you're on an airboat. Let's take a look inside. Bye-bye, civilization. Hold on, here we go. We're going to the front seat. So I can show you. Hey, we're doing a virtual. See, it's me. I'm really here. Oh, wait a minute. There's something else out here that has a sort of bite to it. It's this thing. Wait, there's no gator. Did you know alligators can grow up to 13 feet long? Not only can they grow up to 13 feet long, but they can weigh 500 pounds. And most people would think alligators have no predatory. Nothing that, you know, kills alligators. But there is. Before they're born, raccoons eat their eggs. Birds will eat their eggs. Snakes eat their eggs. And now that we have the pythons in the Everglades, the pythons are actually killing alligators. So, invasive species are always a problem. And that's why we never promote bringing plants into an area that doesn't belong there. They can just cause major problems. Hey, everyone. I'm having a great time. I'm here at Lakahatchee Refuge. And this was our virtual TV. Look, we even got stuff on the ground. Ouch. So, hope you had a great time, everyone. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a few minutes. Bye. Did you know if you live within 20 miles of the ocean, there is saltpeter in the air? Saltpeter is very bad for your car. It can cause rust and dull your paint. So you need to get your car washed at least once a week if you live within 20 miles of the ocean. That's why I go to Majestic Car Wash. My Blue Beauty, I only trust Majestic Car Wash. They're located at 2781 North Federal Highway. You know, you have your choice. Your car can go through the 40-foot-long cleaning tunnel, or it can be 
hand wash. They also have a detail shop that can make your car look brand spanking new. So where do I take my blue beauty? To Majestic Car Wash. You need to go there today. Hey everyone, welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. I just wanna let you know, you can be driving along and just see a sign, and like a, a real sign, not like a sign that tells you to do something. But I saw this sign that said, South Florida National Cemetery. And I know national cemeteries are very important. So I stopped. Oh my God, this place is beautiful, but it's very emotional too. This is one of the newer national cemeteries that was established by the Veterans Administration. It was only established back in 1980, but the cemetery was in this location way before that. As you can see, if you're watching me on YouTube, there's a lot of gravestones here. And like most national cemeteries like Arlington, all the graves look the same. And there's something about that white marble stone and all lined up perfectly. You know, it has a lot to do with the people who are buried here. They're all from the military. And, you know, when you think of military and you think of the military parades, they're always in perfect line. And, and that's kind of the way all these gravestones are. There's 33,000 grave markers here. And it sits on about 313 acres of land. Like I said, we're in South Florida. We're in the area near Lake Worth, but pretty far west. And this property is beautiful. You know, there's some like really famous people who are buried here. Not only famous, but representing pretty much all the different wars. There are people buried here from the Civil War, from the Seminole Wars, which we talked a lot about Seminole Wars. If you watch my podcast, there's many shows I start discussing the Seminole Wars. And also the Spanish-American War. So it's kind of has a lot of people. And then you have World War I, World War II, Vietnam. All these wars are represented here. So it's a very interesting place. As you see, I keep checking behind me because I know what lives in that water right behind me. So if you see something coming out and getting me, you better be yelling. Back to the cemetery itself. There's also three Medal of Honor individuals buried here. Medal of Honor is the highest award given to anyone in the military and it's only issued and given by the president of the United States. One of these individuals, James Hendricks, is one of the three. James was born like back in 1920s and he lived in Arkansas. He had a family, came from a family of 14 kids. Hell, can't even afford to feed one child nowadays. How in the hell are you 14 kids? But he was one of 14 kids in Arkansas and they were sharecroppers. Now, James had a rough life back then. At third grade, he had to drop out of school to start work in the fields. And he became a very good, what they would say, marksman, hunter, because he would have to go hunting for food for his family. So he became very good with the use of a rifle. Well, when he was 18, he was drafted into World War II. And he actually served under 
the platoon of George Patton. During the invasion of D-Day and all that, he was on a ship. He wasn't actually a part of that invasion, but as soon as the invasion was over, his ship landed and they were in France and they actually worked their way over to Belgium, which was the Battle of the Bulge area. James single-handedly, with just a rifle, captured and took over two machine guns garrisons, locations, and captured two of these large machine guns just by himself, which would have easily, they said, killed hundreds and hundreds of American soldiers. Because of that, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. When you come to a place like this, there is so much history here. It's just very emotional too. The things you can learn about this place. I'm telling you, if you are ever in South Florida and you're driving out 441 out in the Lake Worth area, check this place out. It's a very emotional place. I don't know why I get so emotional when I come to these national cemeteries. I get this way when I used to always, when we'd be out there and go to Arlington National Cemetery. It's just like, just think there's like 33,000 graves here. And these are people who some volunteered, some were drafted, but they all served in the, in the military to protect US citizens and to protect our country. They gave years of their lives and put their lives online to protect me, my family, my friends, my community. And because of that, they deserve our ultimate respect. Hey everyone, I'm going to go to break. Please remember to subscribe if you're on my YouTube channel and like my podcast segments, I would really appreciate it. I'll be right back. You're listening and watching to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Hi everyone, I am in my favorite place because as soon as you walk in, the smell of this high quality leather overtakes you. Yes. I'm at Leatherworks, my favorite place to shop. They have the highest quality of leather products in the Southeast. No, no, I'm not just talking about Southeast Florida. I'm talking about the entire Southeast of the United States. Their products are the highest quality leather and a lot of them are made right here. And the great thing about Leatherworks is they do not discriminate against size. So even me, Daddy Bear, I can even find things that fit me here at Leatherworks. But it's not just leather, everyone. If you have a fetish, I guarantee you they have the fetish gear that you may want, let's just say. They have a lot of things to choose from. Go online to leatherworks.com. And that's works, W-E-R-K-S. And while you're there, you can check out, they have specialty classes. You know, if you have like a fetish and you wanna learn more about, you can go there and join the lifestyle program because then you get discounts on in-store promotions. Hey everyone, make sure you go to Leatherworks. That's works with W-E-R-K-S and you can buy online. Hey everyone, welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. And I'm at Fetner's Market. 
or Bettner's Farm, as some of us would know it as, out in Boynton area. This is an incredible place, family owned. And not only is it family owned, but it is the first green market in Palm Beach County. Over 80 acres here, and they grow many of their own vegetables and fruits here. And they have a wonderful, you know, store where you can buy all this stuff. Just check, you know, if it says homegrown on it, that means it was actually grown here on the farm. But not only do they do that, but they also have where you can pick your own. So right now they have picking tools for strawberries, sunflowers, and vegetables. And as you can see, this place gets packed. Look at all the cars. That's for those that are watching on YouTube. But yeah, you can pick your own stuff. And on the weekends, they do hay rides and they have all kinds of really cool stuff here. Like I'm getting the roasted corn. I love corn, but they have all kinds of garden stuff. But look, you can get your own supplies right here. Get your own buckets and you can go pick your own strawberries or get your own sunflowers. It's all here. Now I ask this guy, what's the green buckets for? For vegetables. For vegetables? Mm -hmm. And the black ones are strawberries? Mm -hmm. See, you can go pick your own, get your own strawberries, and just go out into the field. I saw all these sunflowers when I was driving by. Sunflowers just happened to be one of my favorite, very favorite flowers. Ever since I remember a time driving out through the Midwest in the summertime and just saw fields and fields of sunflowers. Ever since then, they became one of my favorites. But they have so many things here. You can spend all day. This is a great place to bring the family and the kids. But you can do all this. They're going to go pick their strawberries. But look at the fields behind me if you're watching on YouTube. That's the sunflower fields. So they grow a lot of things here. I just never heard of this place. You should see, and I'm telling you, the fresh vegetables inside the place, they're incredible. The cauliflower, the white and purple cauliflower. There's so many things here. And this is another place I just stumbled on. I'm driving down 441 out in, I guess, Palm County. I was driving Uber earlier, but I'm just out here driving and all of a sudden there's all these things out here. It's like we're on the verge of country area. But here's the fields. I mean, you got vegetables growing. I'm telling you, this is the place to be. On a weekend, come out here and have fun. And all these people are going to go pick strawberries. It's strawberry time in Florida. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day. And whenever possible, I always support buying local. Make sure you buy local and support your local farmers. It's very important to do that. They have a whole thing here. Oh my God, they have fresh pies inside. Breads and pastries. They make Amish made products. Well, I can tell you one thing, I'm getting hungry. I'm gonna go get that corn, that grilled corn, and I'm gonna get me some mango tea. I like me some mango teas. And since I just did some research on the sweetest fruits, I found out mangoes is one of the sweetest natural fruits. Hey everyone, I gotta go to break because I'm hungry. So you're gonna watch my sponsors and I'll be back at another location. Bye. Stay, stay here, don't go anywhere. Just listen, okay? I'll be right back, I promise. Hey, 
You know what I just found out? My favorite waitress at Flanagan's, Jessie. Well, wait a minute. I should really say one of my favorite waitresses because I don't want to really piss off Ashley or Ellen or any of the other ones. But one of my favorites, Jazzy, I just saw photos that she had taken when she was in Morocco and she told me she's a yoga instructor. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You never told me this. I'm going to start promoting her yoga you can if you live here in fort lauderdale let's all go take private lessons with jesse next week i'm hoping to have more information because she is just too cool and if i'm gonna take yoga i gotta do it with someone who's cool hey everyone welcome back to tripping with silver daddy i hope you enjoyed this episode i had a blast so I hope you enjoyed the things that I got to see. If you did enjoy it, please remember to always follow, subscribe, and like. It means a lot, especially subscribing to my YouTube channel. I need to get to a thousand subscribers to maybe someday make money and I can retire. But let's talk more about what we did today. So I'll start with where I started and where I ended. And that's here at Lakahatchee Refuge. And this is one of the lakes actually in the refuge behind me. Yes, there are alligators out in this pond. But whenever you want to see them, you never see alligators. The problem with alligators is they can become a nuisance. And when they become a nuisance, they have to be usually destroyed, put down. And they only become nuisances because of us humans. Because alligators naturally have a fear of humans. They avoid us. It's only when humans start feeding them that they get used to humans. And they see a human, they think food, so they come closer to humans. Well, when that human doesn't feed them, they still want their food, so that might be your hand. So we do not feed wildlife. That's a hint to my housemate. Don't feed wildlife. It's not good for them. But I love coming to these national parks. And I had a great time today. Going to the farm. Ah, oh, the vegetables were unreal. The stuff they grow there. And I didn't know, like, strawberries grew all over Florida. Well, this is the season that strawberries are, like, in the stores. Buy one, get one free. So there's a lot of strawberries around. So it must be strawberry season. And then going to the National Cemetery. It reminds me when I was a little kid the first time I ever went to Arlington National Cemetery with my mom and dad and the first time I saw JFK's tomb with the internal flame. You know, that was very sentimental. It's stuff that I remember as a little kid, my mom being very upset going to see the grave. Now, John F. Kennedy was assassinated like a year when I was one year old, so I don't remember any of that. But I do remember my mother being so upset over it. And because she was so upset, I knew it was something very important. But yeah, I get very emotional when I go to these national cemeteries, as I told you in that segment. It just makes me realize there are people who give of themselves more than I ever have. So it just makes me appreciate these people that gave their time and served in the military. And then this park, it's just impressive. It's part of the National Park program. I love national parks. I always have. I've always been, as a little kid, when I used to go camping and all that, love national parks. 
I guess the first national park I remember ever going to was the Smoky Mountains with my parents. But my all-time favorite national park, it's really parks because they're right by each other. And that would be the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone National Park. I was both fortunate and unfortunate. One of the first times I ever saw Yellowstone, excuse me, National Park. So this would have been back in the 80s after college. A friend of mine, David and I, we went to the Grand Tetons and we went backpacking to Lake Phelps. Google it. Beautiful lake, sits right in the valley of a big mountains behind it. And we camped down there. And the first two days of camping, it was really cool. We had to worry because there were grizzly bears there. And it was just beautiful. And we were the only ones on this giant lake. Day three, we wake up and we got smoked out. The entire valley was filled with smoke. Yellowstone was on fire and at the time, and it was on fire before we left to go there. But it was Yellowstone, which is just north of the Grand Tetons. And this was when Yellowstone, and still to this day, it was the worst forest fire Yellowstone had ever had. This is back when they would not put out the fires because it was a natural occurrence, but it ended up burning way more than almost half of the entire park. So we had to backpack out with the smoke. And then when we got out, we were told that the south gate of Yellowstone was open. So we booked up to go through Yellowstone. <coughs> we went through the entire national park in one day. And we saw all these people, firemen working on the fire, trying to contain it naturally. You know, we saw trees burning right on the side of the road, but we were able to drive the entire loop through Yellowstone that normally can take two to three days because of tourists. We were like the only ones in the entire park. It was kind of like, run, see Old Faithful go off. Great, get in the car, run, go see this, run, go see this. So almost everything in one day flying around while the entire park was burning. So it was interesting, but it was also a sad thing. But those two parks are probably by far my favorite parks. If you said right now, hey, you can go back to any one park, national park, where would it be? And I'd probably say Yellowstone because of all the different geology and different makeups of the park. But I've never been to Yosemite. I still want to go to Yosemite and haven't been there. So this was a great day. And I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, I do this for me, but I want you to be happy too. I would love for you to leave comments and tell me if you like the shows or not. Would make my day. Hey everyone, I have some credits that we need to roll. I want to give you some information about the places where I was. So let's roll the credits and I'll be right back. back thanks for watching the credits and we are officially ending this podcast and this episode as i always say love peace and respect you've been watching or listening to tripping with silver daddy bye